So let's try and do an FRQ. Okay, so this FRQ um, is from 2016, so it's a really, really recent one. And it's another soil one, which I know, I feel like I'm like, you guys probably aren't as much as I am, but I feel like I'm totally over soil after reading all these FRQs about soil and all these discussion postings about soil. I'm like, okay, let's get to something besides soil, um, which we're almost done with this section. But um, here's another soil one. So you can see there's, you know, there's quite a few soil FRQs, right? Because I think the plate tectonics one was basically about soil. And then the um, geology FRQ is also basically about soil. And then here we have another one. So you can see, it, you know, with soil appears on the AP exam fairly frequently. Um, so it says soil is a complex mixture of living organisms and organic material, along with minerals and other abiotic components. Soils help sustain life and support ecosystem functions. Okay, so um, this FRQ is not a math FRQ. It's not a, a like a, a document-based FRQ where they give you like a little article. It's basically like a regurgitate things that you know FRQ. Okay, um, sometimes I think I find these the hardest because you know, they really, there's not a document you can rely on. You can't rely on your ability to know how to do math. You, you actually kind of have to kind of know what you're talking about. So um, if it's a topic I'm not super familiar with, sometimes these make me nervous. Okay, and it's totally okay for an FRQ to make you nervous. That's one of the reasons why I keep telling you guys to try and do them yourself rather than just looking at the rubric and, and turning in, you know, some stuff you find in on the rubric because when you take the AP exam, you're not going to have that rubric as a um, crutch. And so um, you're sitting there and you're going to feel that moment of panic when they say something and you're like, oh, okay, what do I need to write? And that, you know, learning how to overcome that moment of panic and then knowing what to write and how to write it, um, that's really important, right? Because you're not going to have that um, neat and tidy rubric to, to help you. Right, you're actually going to have to um, use your brain, which sometimes can be painful. So let's see what they want. They're, we know it's going to be about soil. Um, so they say, describe how two climate factors are, um, affect the rate of soil formation. So we need to talk about two, right? Um, so there's a few things that um, relate to climate, right, and, and what causes um, or what causes soil? Let me see. I had a list of them the other day, but let's let's see if we can come up with them on our own, because I feel like we um, can. So some climate things we need to talk. We could talk about um, if you guys have one and you want to join in, uh, feel free. Um, we could talk about precipitation, right? That helps. We talk about temperature. Now, traditionally with climate, I think precipitation and temperature, right? So that's kind of what I think about when I think about uh, precipitation and temperature. But um, we could also talk about maybe time um, or mm, climate is really precipitation and temperature. So like to me as a Science person, I just want to just focus on those two, but um, there's probably a few that you could use because, um, okay, they have temperature, precipitation, and wind. So that's where they're going to allow you to use wind. Okay, so, um, and they said you do not get a point for identifying, just merely identifying. That actually says it on the rubric, okay? So um, you can't just say precipitation and temperature. You have to say, um, you know, precipitation affects soil formation because, right, how, how does precipitation affect soil formation, right? This is actually on your exam, your geology exam. If you haven't taken it already, um, there's actually um, a short answer and it asks, you know, basically it talks about weathering, right? The w rate of weathering and it says precipitation. Not, you know, okay, so precipitation affects soil formation because it increases the rate of weathering and 
I'm trying to write fast. Um, now, can I leave it at that? No, because weathering does not, I still haven't brought it back to soil, right? I haven't brought it back how weathering relates to soil. And the weathering of rock um, adds inorganic, you don't have to have the inorganic part, but um, adds inorganic um, particles to the soil. You know, you could say adds non-living parts of the soil or is parent matter to the soil, something like that, right? Um, so there's our precipitation. And if we wanted to talk about temperature, we could we could kind of do, um, we could kind of talk about the same thing. So we could say um, increased temperature and you, and you could say with decreased temperature, just like with the same, with the precipitation. You could say uh, less precipitation would reduce the rate of uh, weathering which would then reduce the amount of soil being created or something like that. Okay, so we could say increased temperature. I'm just gonna write temp. Um, so I don't, just cause it's quicker. Um, increased temp would increase the rate So what would temperature do, right? And temperature increases the rate of biological, biological and chemical activity, right? Um, which then increases the rate of soil formation, right? Increases the rate of, so you could do either, biological activity, like decomposition, Okay, and again, I can't leave it there, right? Um, I haven't brought that increased rate of biological activity back to soil. Okay, so you need to make sure that your sentence almost, it's almost like a circle, right? How it comes back to soil. So how does our increased temperature come back to soil? Um, like decomposition, which adds organic matter, you could probably even get away with um, saying humus because the humus is basically the organic matter to the soil. Okay, so you see I brought it back to soil. Uh, if I just stopped with decomposition, the reader would go how? Right? Um, and then you should, you know, you might think, well, obviously it's because it's adding organic matter. I just talked about decomposition, but they don't know that you know that. Okay, so that so there's our two descriptions. Okay, so um, we made sure to bring it back to soil both times. Okay, so that's that's really important because they're they're asking about soil formation. Okay, so here's another one. Uh, here's the rest of this FRQ. Now, um, in addition, when you're doing an FRQ, um, if there's a part of it that you don't know the answer to, just go to the next one and then come back to that. Okay, so let's say I know part A or part B a lot better than part A. Start with part B, you know, leave a space for part A. Start with part B, write what you know for part B, and then if you've got time, come back, right? Because each FRQ, you're only supposed to spend about 22 minutes on each one because you get 90 minutes to answer four. That's another reason why I really suggest that you guys um, do the FRQs yourselves, um, the ones for this unit or for the, you know, in the course. And even um, if you really want to practice, um, time yourself, how long it takes you to do the FRQ, not how long it takes you to copy it from the rubric, because I mean, who cares, right? Neither, that's not a very realistic scenario, but you know, take the FRQ, have a blank piece of paper, don't look at the rubric, time yourself and see how you do, you know? And then you can even grade yourself on the rubric, right? Um, so you can see how well you do. Um, that way you're at least getting some practice. Um, one of the things, that I um, had a friend say was that you um, you play like you practice. Okay, uh, no. Um, the FRQs, originally at the beginning of the semester, I was gonna let um, y'all correct your FRQs, but everyone is just copying all the answers from the rubric. So um, 
and I don't mean everyone, like every single person, but basically like 99% of the students are copying the FRQs from the rubric. And so I feel like if you can't copy it from the rubric right the first time, um, you know, I, I'm not going to let you correct them because, you know, you're, you're basically already looking at the rubric when you're writing it, you know, the first time. So, um, but that it'll help you for the test too, because I've noticed that like, People are getting like hundreds, hundreds, hundreds on all the like the FRQs for the unit, and then they take the test. And then the FRQ grades are much lower, at least the ones where they're not cheating. Um, and that and it's because I because I think because you're not used to like writing them yourself. Um, and I like to tell my husband, um, it's a lot more difficult when you're not looking at the um, answer key, right? Um, so I think actually doing them yourself is, is will help you for the AP exam and also for even your unit test. Um, so anyway, if you if there's a part you don't know, you can go on to the next part um, and write that part and then come back to that part that you didn't know and you know maybe be uh, yes may not be a good way to say it, but just kind of like uh, fudge your way through it. Um, you know, put some stuff down to see if you can get some points, right? But there's usually at least one part of an FRQ, you know, that you can at least earn a couple points, right? Um, so just try. I mean, it, it's not like you're going to, um, you, you're definitely not going to get any points if you leave a blank on the exam. So you might as well, like, write something or try, you know. The worst that will happen is you won't get any points. Um, so let's see. Um, so this one is asking about the, the soil horizons. And so they're talking about the A the A horizon. So they're asking for a a biotic component and then an A biotic component. And they're just saying identify. So you don't even you don't have to give me any interesting information. You just have to say like a word, right? Um, so for biotic, you could say stuff like humus or microorganisms or bacteria, earthworms, anything that is alive or it used to be alive. Okay, so like the humus, bacteria, uh, the roots, or sorry, uh, I was thinking fungi and then saying roots. Um, the roots of the plants, um, any sort of bugs, um, you could say specific bugs like beetles, or you could just say bugs. You could say decomposers. You know, anything that's alive. Okay. And then um, the abiotic means not alive. Uh, never used to be alive. Okay, so like biotic can be used to be alive. Biotic is like not alive, never was alive. Okay, so what are some um, non-alive parts in soil, right? We could talk about, um, well, our sand and our silt and our clay, right, our, our particles. Um, those are all not alive, right, because they're from rocks. You could talk about the nutrients. Um, and you could even say specific nutrients. You could say, like, phosphorus. Nitrogen, you know, none of those are alive. Um, you can talk about rocks, pebbles, you know, anything that's not alive and never used to be alive. All of that would be, all of that would count. Okay, and you only have to do one of those, right? So just pick one and write it and then go on. Um, actually, on the AP exam, anything after your first thing, since they asked for one, Anything after your first thing, they are not even supposed to read, right? So make sure whatever you write first, if you're going to write extra stuff, is the best because the rest of it, they don't even read. They pretend it, does, it, is, it doesn't exist, okay? Um, so, for example, you put, like, rocks and humus here. Since you put rocks first, you're not going to get the points because they're going to pretend that humus was ever written. Okay, so since rocks are first, you wouldn't get the point for the biotic because rocks aren't biotic, right? If you had put humus and rocks, 
then you would get points because Hemus is alive or used to be alive and Hemus is first and then rocks they're you know they're pretending that wasn't there so make sure you put your best answer first um almost I promise um so then they say resources such as soil and water can be degraded by human activities um one of the things I like about wait a second I went to the wrong slide um one of the things I like about when they say human activities is because um, it seems like almost all questions have like the same answers for human activities. Like, what are we doing to screw stuff up? Okay, so they're saying nitrate levels exceeding the um, EPA's primary drinking water standard have been found in the groundwater of areas with intensive agriculture. And then they say identify. So that means we just have to say it. We don't have to talk about it. One agriculture practice that can lead to elevated nitrate levels in groundwater and then they say describe how that practice in part one um, leads to elevated nitrate levels in groundwater. So you have to talk about the same one. So if you're going to identify something, make sure, that's why I like to um, read at least the whole section first or the whole part, like part C, read that all first. Because like say I pick something for part one or part I, I guess. And then um, part II says, oh, I have to describe that thing. Oh, crap. I knew that was a, an agricultural practice, but I don't know really how to describe it. So make sure you're picking something that you know how to describe. So, um, so some are some practices that lead to nitrate levels, um, right? We've, we've been talking a lot um, about fertilizer. Right, that's going to cause increased nitrate levels because basically fertilizer is nitrogen and phosphorus. Um, the improper sealing of feedlots, so like, um, so like basically there's um, feedlots is where they're going to have lots of animals and they're feeding them, and then um, which leads to the next one is um, animal waste. Okay, um, animal waste has a lot of nitrate in it, um, right? P, urine is basically nitrogen. Um, ammonia has lots of nitrogen in it. Um, so this animal waste can then seep into the groundwater, which is totally disgusting, um, and, and uh, contaminate the groundwater. And it's not such a big deal when you have like lots of little random animals, but when you have these, these places, they're called CAFOs. Um, and they have lots and lots and lots of animals on a very, very, very small area of land. Um, they can, like, the animals, like, can barely move. You've got all of those animals peeing and pooping, and then when it rains, you know, all that washes into the soil, and all of that nitrogen is getting into the waterways and into the groundwater, and so ground uh, animal waste is a huge um, way, and that's a, you know, that's not agricultural planting, that's agricultural, like, growing animals, okay? And so whichever one of these seems easiest to you, you know, then, you know, pick one, like, say I wrote fertilizer, and then I'm going to describe that one next, okay? I can't write fertilizer and describe animal waste, okay? So we could say that um, when fertilizer is applied, and I'd probably say when fertilizer containing nitrogen, just so they know that I know. is applied to crops and then watered in the nitrogen can infiltrate and you could say like seep or something you know you don't have to use big science words um, you could say the nitrogen can infiltrate the soil and contaminate the groundwater. Okay, so now I've talked about, remember, I, I brought it back to nitrogen, right? I didn't just say the fertilizer um, infiltrates the soil. I brought it back to the groundwater. I said, how is that happening, right? It's contaminating the groundwater. 
Okay, so I'm um, again, I want to make sure that they know that I know. Okay, and then um, let's see. Okay, we just have two parts, so we'll, I'll try and do this really quickly because I know we only have a few minutes left. Um, okay, so then it says acid deposition, right? That's acid rain affects soil quality in many parts of the northeastern United States. So in this one, they want to um, explain. So you're going to have to, you know, show that you know something. You can't just identify something. And then the next part, they want you to describe as well. Mm. So explain one way that acid deposition can affect um, plant health. And then you want to talk about how you can fix the soil. Okay. Um, so we could talk about how um, acid deposition can increase the acidity of the soil, which will reduce the plant growth, right? Um, since y'all like to talk about pH tests, this is kind of um, related to that. Can decrease the pH of the soil, right? Make it more acidic. Okay, so so remember again, I'm taking my acid deposition. And I'm not saying decreases the pH of soil. Period. I'm saying and it reduces plant growth. So I'm saying how it's going to affect the plant health, right? It's decreasing the growth. Okay, they can't grow as well. Okay, so how are we going to fix this? Um, you know, so if we're talking about um, this this particular one, right, uh, in decreasing the pH of soil, we said we could add, we could talk about we could add a buffer, like uh, to neutralize the pH. or raise the pH. Okay, so that's saying exactly how we're gonna do it, okay? Um, so, and you can't just say like add a buffer or even add a buffer like line, period, right? How is that going to fix it, right? It's going to neutralize or raise the pH of the soil. Okay, so again, we're bringing it back to what we're fixing, okay? You can't just say just add the buffer like line. You have to be more specific, okay? Um, that's why a lot of times when you guys are doing your discussion postings, I'll say, be more specific. Okay, how are you going to do this? Be more specific about how you're going to do this. Um, because I'm trying to get you practice writing um, AP exam-esque, I guess. Okay, so now it says uh, climate change is causing far-reaching ecosystem changes, including soil degradation in many of the world's biomes. Describe two ways that um, climate change can degrade soil. So we need two. Okay. So there's lots of ways that you can do it. Um, if we have, we could talk about, I'm just, um, since we don't have a lot of time, I'm going to not write it in sentence form, but I'm going to cut up, like, for example, um, so we could say increased temps will then cause desertification or can, or can cause um, increased temps and decreased rainfall. Let me write it like that. Okay, that can cause desertification. Okay, and, and that counts. That's, that's a, an accepted method of soil degradation. You could write how um, you could have increased erosion caused by increased precipitation. Right, you could talk about rising sea levels. Can flood coastal areas with salt water. which then causes what I feel like this course's favorite thing to talk about is right now is salinization. 
I feel like I read a lot about synchronization every day when I'm reading your stuff. Um, so um, stuff like that. Um, you can say that the increased temperature could increase breakdown of organic matter, which if this happens too fast, you know, it's going to go through the soil too quickly. Okay, so um, anything like that would be possible, but you see how I'm saying not just increase um, temperature, or decrease rainfall, or increase erosion, or whatever. I'm then bringing it back, right? Is how it relates back to soil. Okay, so I'm bringing it back each time to soil. Um, sometimes it's usually only one step in this one. It's like two steps to bring it back to soil, but I'm still bringing it back to soil every time. 